Now, we wish to introduce another form of complex numbers. First, we recall that every point, bracket a comma b, in Cartesian coordinates can also be expressed in polar coordinates, bracket r comma theta, where r is the distance from the origin, and theta is the angle measured from the positive horizontal axis. The horizontal distance of the point from the origin is r times cos theta, while the vertical distance from the origin is r times sine theta. So a equals r times cos theta, and b equals r times sine theta. That means a plus ib can be written as r times cos theta plus ir sine theta. We can take out the common factor r to have r times cos theta plus i sine theta. This motivates the following definition. For a real number theta, we define e to the i theta as cos theta plus i sine theta, which is a complex number. Geometrically, e to the i theta is a complex number on the unit circle, which is the circle with radius 1 centered at the origin. Theta is the angle measured in radians. Note that the absolute value of e to the i theta is 1. For a general complex number, we can write it in the so-called polar form, z equals r times e to the i theta, which equals r times cos theta plus i sine theta, which is the expression we had before. Note that r is the absolute value of z, and theta is called the argument of z, denoted by arg bracket z. Also, since cos of negative theta equals cos theta, and sine of negative theta equals negative sine theta, we have that the complex conjugate of e to the i theta equals e to the negative i theta. We also observe that for all integers k, cos of theta plus 2k pi equals cos theta, and sine of theta plus 2k pi equals sine theta. So, e to the i times theta plus 2k pi equals e to the i theta for all integers k. With this observation, we can deduce that whenever we have two complex numbers which are equal, say r1 e to the i theta 1 equals r2 e to the i theta 2, then we know that r1 equals r2 and theta 1 equals theta 2 plus 2k pi for some integer k. That is, whenever we have two complex numbers equal, their absolute values must be the same, and their arguments are the same up to a multiple of 2 pi. Let's look at some examples of complex numbers in polar form, and we try to convert them into the standard form. Firstly, consider the complex number e to the pi i. It is equal to the cos of pi plus i sine of pi, which equals negative 1 plus i times 0, which is just negative 1. Next, e to the pi i over 2 equals cos of pi over 2 plus i times sine over 2, which equals 0 plus i times 1, which is just i. Then, 2 times e to the pi i over 4 equals 2 times cos of pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4, which equals 2 times square root of 2 over 2 plus i square root of 2 over 2, which equals square root of 2 plus i square root of 2. Lastly, e to the negative pi i over 6 equals cos of pi over 6 minus i sine pi over 6, which equals 1 over 2 minus i square root of 3 over 2. We can visualize these complex numbers using the complex plane. For example, e to the pi i is negative 1, which corresponds to the coordinate negative 1, 0 on the Cartesian plane. So, 
it is a point on the unit circle which intersects with the negative real axis. Secondly, e to the pi i over 2 is i, which corresponds to the coordinate 0, 1 on the Cartesian plane, so it should be on the unit circle intersecting with the positive imaginary axis. Thirdly, 2 times e pi i over 4 has a distance of 2 from the origin, and it makes an angle pi over 4 to the real axis. So we should see it lying there, whose distance from the origin is twice the radius of the unit circle. Lastly, e to the negative pi i over 6 lies on the unit circle and makes an angle of pi over 6 below the real axis. Now we present the following useful result. e to the i times theta 1 plus theta 2 equals e to the i theta 1 times e to the i theta 2. In other words, a sum of powers equals the product of the individual numbers. This property is the same as the powers of real numbers. e to the a plus b equals e to the a times e to the b for real numbers a and b. To do this, we make use of the polar form. So e to the i times theta 1 plus theta 2 equals the cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus i sine theta 1 plus theta 2, which equals, using trigonometric formulas, cos theta 1 times cos theta 2 minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2 plus i times sine theta 1 cos theta 2 plus cos theta 1 sine theta 2. This is equal to cos theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 times cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2, which can be easily verified by expanding the brackets. So indeed, this is e to the i theta 1 times e to the i theta 2. This proposition allows us to give a formula for multiplying complex numbers, which we record as a corollary. If we multiply two complex numbers, r1 e to the i theta 1 and r2 e to the i theta 2 together, then the product is equal to r1 r2 e to the i times theta 1 plus theta 2. This means that to multiply two complex numbers in polar form, we just need to multiply the absolute values and add the arguments. In particular, if we multiply a complex number by itself n times, then it is equal to raising the absolute value to the power n and multiplying the argument by n. This is known as the de Morphs formula.